I declared a state of emergency two days ahead of the storm, which gave us time to mobilize and prepare for the worst. And I'm so glad that we did because it impacted literally every part of our state. Many communities have been scarred with major infrastructure damage. And at one point, at least 1.3 million power meters were not functional and many more Georgians were without power. That number incredibly is down to 225,000 as we speak. In Atlanta, we saw record rainfall with 11.12 inches of rain in a 48 hour period. The previous state record goes back to 1886 when we had 9.6 inches. As many people around the country know, we are in an agricultural state with agriculture serving as our number one industry. Hurricane Helene has wiped out much of this year's crop across the board. Our agriculture commissioner, Tyler Harper, couldn't be here today, but he wanted me to pass along a few highlights of this devastation. 35% of our cotton crop is a total loss. 10 to 30% of the peanut crop is lost. 14 dairies across the state are still without power. There was 22 total from the start. Over 222 poultry houses have been destroyed with hundreds of others damaged and some loss of oper operations for the entire farm. There's extensive infrastructure damage and loss of livestock facilities. And as I told the president earlier, approximately 4 million acres of timberland has been impacted and 48,000 acres of pecans have been damaged or destroyed as a result of this storm. I want everyone in this state to know that we are with you during these difficult times and we aren't going anywhere. We are putting every possible state resource we have at response and recovery. And I've taken several executive authority steps to try to bring relief as quickly as we can. That includes activating and deploying roughly 2,000 Georgia Guardsmen, our citizen soldiers who are doing incredible work in the field. It includes suspending the gas tax for as long as we're under a state of emergency and waiving the penalty on the use of dyed diesel fuel in street vehicles. I want to thank the members of the General Assembly. I know we got some of them here with us today for supporting all of these measures. They are crucial partners in our overall response to this tragic event and have been tireless advocates for the Georgians they represent. And we'll continue to urge FEMA to add more impacted counties to the federal declaration list. We started with just 11, and after a call to both the White House and FEMA, they upped that number considerably up to 44 or 45 counties as we speak. We're also being mindful of our neighbors who have come to our aid in times past. Yesterday, I authorized the Georgia Guard to send a Chinook helicopter and crew to North Carolina to help in ongoing search and rescue operations. What they're going through, what we're all going through, is a living nightmare. And we're going to continue to pull together as we go through this together. These are just a few of the actions that we've taken, but rest assured, we will not stop until everyone is recovered and made whole. Someone sent me a Bible verse earlier today, and I've been thinking a lot about this. It's Galatians 6, 9. And it reads, and let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. Those words epitomize where we are today and our commitment. We are not giving up. We are not going to leave until the job is done. I want to encourage all of our local officials and the, so many of their citizens that are working so hard on this recovery and helping and talking to people every day. Keep up that great work, keep the faith, and know that we will be with you till the end. It is my honor, and I want to thank President Trump for coming back to our state again for the second time to view storm damage and keep a national focus on our state as we recover. I hope you'll welcome the 45th President of the United States, Donald Trump. Mr. President. Well, Brian, thank you very much. Your governor is doing a fantastic job, I will tell you that. And uh, we're all with him and with everybody. We've just met a group of really uh, wonderful patriots that are 
working very hard. They've done it before, but they told me they've never seen one like this, Brian. This is the worst they've seen. And some of them are looking back 25 years. That's a lot. But I want to thank the governor and everybody for having uh, put out to the extent that they've had to. And it's uh, really incredible. The uh, some of the people that we uh, met just now, Congressman Rick Allen, terrific person, Speaker of the Georgia House, John Burns, who's here, former Congressman Doug Collins. Where's Doug Collins? Is he around here? Doug Collins. What a nice guy he is. Oh, Doug, I haven't seen you in so long. You haven't changed. You look good. You look better, actually, if you want to. State Senator Max Burns, who's here, and District Attorney Barbie Christine. And we want to thank you, but we want to thank the people that are working so hard, and we're here in Evans, Georgia, to express our support, our love, and our prayers, and uh, all of the communities are suffering. It's not even believable when you look and you see the kind of suffering that's going on right now. But one of the biggest, uh, I guess, question marks is the fact that there's so many people missing. I've never seen anything where so many, the numbers are so large of, of those that are missing, Governor, right? So that's uh, something that Hopefully, they'll be found, and they'll be found very healthy, but uh, it never looks great. It never looks great. Our hearts break for the more than 200 American families who have lost their lives already. Officially, 200, and uh, that number, unfortunately, is going to be going up. It's uh, one of the deadliest storms in American history. More than two dozen Georgians have died, including a 27-year-old mother and her two precious babies who lived not very far from the from McDuffie County, and uh, father, a lot of people knew these people. They're great. As father and grandfather, I know that such sudden and tragic loss must be almost unbearable. Don't know how you can even take it. Uh, loved ones all over, all over your county, all over your state, and all over a lot of other states. You have Florida. Think of it. You have Virginia. You have South Carolina. You have Alabama. North Carolina maybe hit the worst. North Carolina is so bad. I want to thank uh, Elon Musk, by the way, for his quick action with Starlink. He supplied uh, a lot of equipment to the governor, to Georgia, and to North Carolina in particular. And he acted very, very quickly. They needed communication. There was no communication. The poles are down. The wires are down. And he acted really, really quickly. I, in fact, I called him and I was getting thank you notices already from North Carolina and Georgia, and I wasn't off the phone with him. So I don't know what the hell he's, I guess he's got some kind of a, a little special deal going. He works, he works pretty fast, I'll tell you, but he's been great. And uh, Larry Ellison made a very big contribution, and a friend of the governor's and mine is right here, Steve Whitcoff, who also made a very big contribution. Steve, we appreciate it very much. Thank you. The uh, homes and roads, as the governor told you, are it's all being worked on. Everything's being worked on. And the good thing is uh, when I just met a group, and now I, just, I met two groups, and now I'm meeting a third. And I will tell you that uh, I have no doubt that whatever can be done is going to be done. It's going to take time. It's going to take a lot of effort, and it's, uh, it's a very heartbreaking situation. Uh, we're going to go to North Carolina now, and we're going to see some of our friends. And, North Carolina, some very good friends, and they have just been totally devastated. They've never seen anything like this. But I want to thank everybody for being here, and uh, we'll — we have a big election coming up, and if uh, I'm involved, I told the governor, if I'm involved, they're going to get uh, the best treatment. They're going to get treatment like uh, like we did in the past. We always had — we had a big uh, — the farmers got hit very hard, and I guess they got hit just as hard, or maybe — is this worse, or is this of equal? Probably worse. That was a bad one. But we, uh, we worked two or three times together in big storms, but I don't think we've seen anything like this. But we got it taken care of in record time, and we will be very open and very committed to this state because it's a great state and you have great leadership, and the governor, again, is doing a fantastic job. So thank everybody very much for being here. I appreciate it. And uh, we may see you later, we may not, but we will be back, and whenever the governor needs us, we will be here. And thank you over there. That's a nice group of people. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.
It's great. No, no, no. It's great. No, we work together. We've always worked together very well. Very, really well. It's, it's top. Yes? Yeah, of course they are. It's been a, a terrible response from the White House. Uh, they're missing a billion dollars that was used for another purpose, and nobody's seen anything like that. No, from that standpoint, it's been terrible. Say it. I'm not thinking about voters right now. I'm thinking about lives. And to be honest, it's uh, much bigger than anything else. But we're thinking about lives. A lot of lives lost. A lot of people missing. And uh, that's what I'd be focused on right now. No, it's not. It's uh, inflation has uh, devastated our economy. It's one of the big problems we have. And on jobs, we have uh, the illegals have taken more jobs than anybody else. You have uh, illegals coming in and they're taking the jobs. And when you look at the numbers from that standpoint, it's a shame. We have to get the jobs to the people that have lived here for a long time and they're uh, great, great citizens of our country. But when you look at the job numbers, they just came out and then you look at who's getting the jobs. And it's been uh, very unfortunate from that standpoint. Uh, you have illegal, you have the migrants, you're reading about it. Now, a lot of the money that was supposed to go to Georgia and supposed to go to North Carolina and all of the others is going and has gone already. It's been gone for people that came into the country illegally. And nobody's ever seen anything like that. That's a shame. I don't know anything about what he said. I only can hope that it's going to be free and fair. And I think in this state it will be. And I hope in every state it will be. And I think we're going to do very well. But right now we're focused on this. We're not focused on the election. Well, I won it easily in 2016. We actually were very close last time. And right now, the recent poll came up. We're up seven. So I think we're pretty far up. And we seem to be going up. And she seems to be going down. So I hope we're going to keep it that way. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.